Hi, this is Martin Shermington, and as you can see, I am in a different location at the offices in San Francisco, a place called WeWork, and I'm joined today by Lee. How are you doing, Lee? I'm very well. How are you? Excellent. Always good to see you, mate. And you and, too. Yeah, and I am going to ask all the dumb questions, as I like to do, around Nodex, because some people will know what Nodex is, and some will be, I don't want to use the word scared, but it's just, <laughs> <laughs> there is definitely something about learning a new tool that, yeah. that, that, that people find a challenge. So we're going to go from the very basics through, and I'm hopefully going to be able to sort of layer a few questions on out of my own curiosity, because I've used the tool, but I am no expert in the tool. So I want to get my skills up, and to do that, we're going to use the example of my my profile. Is that right? That's right. Okay. So I'm, I believe that the way we're going to do this, this is going to be, if you're watching this, this is going to be quite entertaining because Lee's going to talk me through the demo. I'm going to share it from my screen and uh, we're going to go through it that way. So as I get myself ready, Lee, um, what, what are we going to achieve through this? What, what is the reason to be using Nodex? Okay. <clears throat> That's a, a question and a half in its own right. First of all, with Nodex, it can do a, a variety of different things. So let's just break those down into categories of what we can do. With Nodex, we can analyze our own networks to see how uh, the people that we follow or follow us are connected to one another, if they are connected to one another. Right, we now I'm going to interrupt you as we go along because I think the easiest way for me is to go, uh, and what does that actually mean? Because we talk in these terms, what does that mean from a network perspective? Okay, so the, the, the thing is with social media, people have a tendency to follow other people. Um, say the example, let's say um, I follow you, am I more likely to follow those people that also follow you? All right, um, because potentially we share similar interests, as an example. You know, if we looked at Twitter, um, the, the, the habitual thing there was I'll follow you, you'll follow me back. Yeah. Right. It doesn't happen here on Google+. Plus. You earn a follow. You earn every single follow. Um, although there are some people that are constantly pushing to try and get you to follow, follow, follow. But, you know, in terms of um, with Google+, Plus, it's like, well, if I follow Martin Shervington, um, the people that follow you obviously have similar interests. They, they want to learn or they want to know. They want to have access to information. They want to pick at your brain and all that kind of thing. So therefore, are they going to be experiencing and, and putting into practice the knowledge that they're gaining from you? Um, if so, are they going to be interpreting it in a different way? Therefore, will they be talking about it in a different way, which will help me understand it from a different perspective? Yeah. So that me following them may well be beneficial to me as an individual using social media or using Google+. Yeah. So that's one thing there. We can analyze also um, uh, Google Plus pages and looking at the activity graphs. Um, and what that tells us is, you know, who are the most active people that are taking place or taking part within a post? Who are commenting the most? You know, or are people more passive as in terms of are they just more likely just to click plus one for whatever reason that is? Um, if they're commenting, are their comments more valuable? Um, are they adding value to the conversation? Um, and if so, are those comments attracting additional um, commentary from other people? You know, uh, and, that, and I'll dive in because one of the reasons is that this isn't just um, about the page; it's about the shares that have occurred from right. the content from that page. That's one of the big differences, isn't it? It's the network right. spread that you've got access to of yeah, all of the nodes. And should we use the word yeah. nodes? Should I stand for a second? So these, uh -huh. are, these, are, these are the, so a node is a person or a page. Is it a, no, but is it a person or a page in this context then? Um, well, a, a node, it, it can be either or. So a page, when we, and we'll talk about nodes in a moment because some people won't know what a node is, but when you look at a node, it's a dot. And that dot can be um, a person, it could be a page, it can be uh, a comment, it could be a plus one. It's, 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 it's an activity. It's a, well, it, 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 sometimes. Yeah, yeah. absolutely. Okay. Now, so the color of those nodes and where those nodes are positioned within the graph tell us 
what that activity of that person or that page yeah. is doing. Um, and with that information, we can find out, you know, um, which posts are more likely over a period of time to get um, or attract more engagement. Now, from our own personal perspective, you know, we want to understand what our audiences prefer to read about. You know, where the knowledge gaps are. Um, where how do, do we need to go in deeper into a certain subject matter, or are people actually? getting what you just put out. If so, you know, do you want to explore that a certain question a bit more because the questions that come through from the comments can lead into uh, you know, another fantastic post which will attract so much more engagement and reshares and all of these things. So the insights that we get from the graphs and the activity um, and who is sharing and you know, it's slightly more than just the ripple effect or using Google Ripples, uh, which I love, um, but with Nodex, all the different nodes, we can actually start to see how everything else is, share, is being shared and who are those people that are maybe don't have enough time at this moment in time, are they using the plus one as a, as a bookmark to come back to later? It tells us a lot of different things. You know? Okay. So a couple of things to point out to people. Firstly, if you're on Google+, and you're watching this on Google+, uh, Nodex is free. That's right, isn't it, Lee? Totally free. Completely. Yeah. So this is this is a tool for you to use. There's there's not um, a, an upsell that will happen at a certain point in time. It's a totally free tool. Yeah. Lee said this all along for people who are on Google Plus. So um, just to to know that, that what we're about to show you, you're able to do. It's not going to cost you any money. So no. what we're going to do, Lee, I think the best way is if I start, I'll show my screen. Let's put you on full screen a sec. I'll show my screen and we'll begin at the beginning. And that, this might mean that we have to do a little juggling, as we know, because it might take a little time. Um, do you now see the social network analysis screen, your, your home page? I do now see that, yes. Now, do you want me to log in via that one, or do you want me to log in via the other one, actually thinking no, about let's, it? No, let's, let's go there. Let's so go there. so yeah. the, the first thing, then, is to sign in, correct? Yeah. Right, right, so let's just do that. So I click on the sign in button. It's like you're getting one of my video tutorials, everybody will get. <laughs> look, at, look at this. Um, okay, so the first thing is we get the, the screen that explains the, the video, what Nodex is, so people can watch that when they log in for the first time yeah. and gives you a little idea. Now, you've got me up here. Mm -hmm. See, I've logged in as myself. Where yep. do I go next? What do I do? Okay. So, um, this is what people will see if they haven't started any projects. And maybe, you know, another time we can go into the whole projects, Martin, as well. Yeah, yeah. But, from, from this perspective, let's just look at your personal profile graph. Oh, I, and I haven't. I realized I need to blue box me, so folks, so you're going to be looking at the bottom. Is that okay? Can you see that okay now? Perfect. Okay, cool. Okay. Yep. So, um, if you go to the top of the screen where you've got my graphs. Yep. Yep. And then click on Google Plus Relationships. Okay. Now, what it's now doing, if I'll just talk you through this, um, it's now going to start collecting all of the people that you follow, yep. okay, first of all, and then it will look at the people within those people that you follow, um, how those people are also connected to one another, if they are connected to one another. Okay. okay. Now, this is... It, Obviously, depending on the number of people that are um, you're, you're following or they're following you, can take some time. Yeah, yeah, it can take some time. That's fine. Yeah. We're prepared for this. It's okay. We're prepared for this. So, so these I have four thousand people around about that I'm following. Correct. That I have in circle. So, so that's what we're building up now. So, exactly. the, the question. Let's go for the first question. What's yeah. the difference between green and mm -hmm. orange? Okay, so the green ones are your direct connections, and your orange ones are indirect connections. Okay, okay. next question. What's mm -hmm. the difference? Okay, so the people, so the people you're directly following um, are green. So, for example, I know you're following me, so we, I would be a green. Yep. All right. But let's say um, uh, you're not following John Smith. All right, but he, but I'm following him. And therefore, you you are now indirectly connected to him. So he is in my extended circles. Correct. 
okay, we're talking to, in Google Plus terms, that's, that's what That's absolutely fine. Yeah. Okay, right. why are they appearing? Because there's probably a lot of people that are in my extended circles. Mm -hmm. Why are these ones appearing? Because they will actually become what's called a connector or a loose tie or a weak tie, should we say, to, between other people. They will, as the graph starts to develop, you will start to see other connections around those orange nodes. Yeah, and that starts to build bridges. And what I mean by that is, when you, let's say you wanted to try and connect it to my dad, all right? My dad's a hev heavily into, um, an influential in a subject matter. But you're not connected to him directly, but you're connected indirectly through me, yeah? Yep. yep. Unless you now want to start, you know, seeing what they talk about, do you want to follow them? Do you need to outreach to them? You know, reach out to them in some way, shape, or form. Learn more about them. Learn about their activity. Um, how would you do that? What's the best approach? So this is the starting point for that. Um, now, with that in mind, you can also then say, well, this person that you're following, um, you know, five thousand people is a lot of people to follow, approximately. Yeah, you're never going to keep tabs on all of them, and you may have been following this one uh, person for a, a period of time and actually they started off all doing really really well and now they've turned into a spam account yeah yeah so you can start to uh, use this graph to identify spam accounts and what they push out in terms of content is always about me 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 you know um, we all know what they like but this kind of just highlights that a little bit more okay so from that perspective, you know, we can start looking for these clusters within the graph and say, okay, I can see this, this cluster around here that I'm not directly connected to, but there are other people in my network that are also following that other person. Perhaps I should also be following them because what they're sharing is of value to me in some way, shape, or form. Okay. So, and, and so this, this may take some time because I've got quite a few. Now, so just to explain, so if you hover over, you can actually see a person Correct. at any of these points. So each of these the, are people or pages. Correct. These are people. A bunch of people are you're following, yes. Okay. So okay. that's fine. Right. Now let's just come across to, to an extra few things as we're waiting for all this to build. What is all this stuff, Lee? Which, aha. Right. So. Let's skip the first one, the order nodes by. Can you see a little green play button? I can. Can you play, press it for me? Yes. OK. <laughs> now, what this now does is organize the nodes within the graph. OK? And you'll start to, I mean, we can, you can pause it there now or just click this. Just, just press stop, is it? Yep. OK. What it will actually do is it will, um, when all of your friends have loaded up and all of the connections have loaded up, then what will actually happen is it will organize the nodes so that the shortest distances between one node or one profile and another profile um, is equidistant. Okay, So you can see how closely connected you are or another person is just by looking at it. As okay, so here's the question. What does closely connected mean? Okay, so let's say at the moment you can see you're smack bang in the middle. Of that yeah. graph, yeah. right. So the only way of identifying how close everyone is is by sticking you in the middle. Yes. Right. However, as more and more nodes are added to the graph, yeah, and the connections are built between one profile and another, you're more likely. Well, I'm saying I'm saying this. You're highly connected. However, from the the average person on Google Plus, they should slowly start to move out of the center of the graph. Obviously, the, the best position to be in is smack bang in the middle, which basically puts you as a, as a linchpin within any form of uh, network. Okay, So from this perspective, if you're moving slowly away from the center of your own um, Google Plus network, then you could say you're not either not connecting in the right way to the people within the network, because other people within the network aren't also following you back, um, for whatever reason that is. It could be because, A, they don't know of you, um, you're not posting content that 
uh, that resonates with them enough. So it can tell you quite a lot. That's yeah. right. Let me pause there. So that's interesting. And I'm going to come back a sec. Let's just, I'll, go, I'll come back in the room. That's fine. Um, that's, so one of the things which, excuse the, excuse the craziness for a second as I come back in. Yeah. Um, let's put the Leon full screen here. Let's see. Oh, have I confused it? Probably. I might have done. Okay, we'll see. We'll see. I may not may not switch screens too many times then. Um, <laughs> so one of the things that I've been doing, and one of the reasons I wanted to chat with Lee for, for those that haven't been aware of this, this is a bank network. Mm -hmm. And we often think in terms of content, we think in terms of engagement, and we talk about connecting with people, but I think we do it on quite a, a, a straightforward level. They circle me, they circle me back, and then we get to extended circles. The people that I have in my circles, the people that they have in their circles as well. And we, we kind of get this conceptually. But when we start talking about, well, I mean, I like to, to have a map in my head of what is going on mm -hmm. on Google Plus generally. And this is where this tool starts to build up. And as I said, over time, we, we know, hopefully myself and Lee will, will, we might even do another one or two of these sorts of sessions as we de dig deeper. But understanding the network, understanding our place in the network, this is almost what you've just said there, Lee, is almost the first thing Correct. to go, okay, it, it, you can troubleshoot in a way. It's like if you're building the page and you're not toward the center, if you're looking at a page or build your profile, you're building up your profile and you're not towards the center, then it, a little flag could come up Correct. as to that. So that's the first thing that you can look at and, and people know how to do that now. So I can tell it's, it's, it's taking some juice out of this um, network, Lee, to... to, to well, can I show you my... There's a lot going on on your, on your back end, I can tell. Yeah, there's a, there's a lot going on when it analyzes. I mean, you can imagine, it looks at each time it puts a profile within the graph, it then looks at their connections as well. And then it looks and identifies other commonality points between your network and their network. Yeah? So... Um, there's a lot of processing power um, and uh, organization behind it. Yeah. If I, maybe if I can share my screen with you, you can see. Uh, oh yeah. See a finished see. one. Oh, it, it, yeah, if it's the right time now, the only thing, I've just come back into this one. Is, uh, have you got something else? Let's do it. Yeah. Let's I, do it. Let's switch out. Yeah. Give me a second. So let's put you back on. Okay. Go okay. Ahead. Yeah. So let me just share this with you. Okay, let me know when you can see that. Okay, yes. Okay, cool. So, you asked, you know, about the right-hand side over here and what it does. I mean, once a graph is loaded up, you can see in the graph statistics area down here, which I've just highlighted in blue. Yep. yep. I've got total nodes within the graph, 4,353. Okay. Okay. And... And nodes in this meaning is a person or a page. There's no post activity. That's the point. Correct. That There's no post activity okay. in here whatsoever. Okay. Now, <clears throat> from there, then we can see, you know, we've got some large orange nodes in there, um, which I'll explain what everything of that is in a second. But um, let me just bring that back up. What I'm now going to do is say, because of all these different nodes, it's very difficult to try and say. You know, what action points can I get from this? Who are the, the, the most connected people in my network? All right. So from that, what I'm going to do is just change the order nodes by from simple all right, to okay. in degree. Okay. Now what we've oh, What was that word, Lee? To what? In degree. In degree. Okay. okay. Now, um, there is a blog post on that and I'll post the link to that shortly, just explaining what each of these are. However, in degree is basically the number of connections coming in to you at this specific point, or to a node, all right, okay. to another profile. Out degree is the exact opposite, okay? Let's just work with these two for right now. So out degree, how many nodes am I connecting to coming out from me to other people, yeah? So we're going to work with in degree. So that would be how many people I have in my circles. Is that the Correct. same thing or not? Uh, no, how many people have you in their circles? Okay. All right. Mm. And I'll go in from there. Now, it doesn't look like it's changed anything, but if I 
drop down here. If I go to simple again, you can see at the bottom, just above graph statistics, something just above it, when I change to in degree, something's going to be inserted in there called filter graph. Yeah. It's a slider. So okay. I can slide on that. Okay. And what it's done is just... Slide away, buddy. Slide away. Go on. Right. So now what we've got are those people within the graph with more than 32 connections. Right. Hold on. So now we're getting into... So let's now get what this means. So what we are now looking at people that have mean circles that have more than 32 connections. Right. This, if right. it was your graph, correct. If it was. Right. Okay. Yep. Yeah. Yeah. That's fine. All right. Yeah. Um, coming into them, so more than 32 people following them. Yeah. Uh, so from <clears throat> from this perspective. But hold on. Now, hold on. Hold on. Hold on. I'm being done. Okay. So let's just. I want to make sure I get this absolutely right. So if this was mine. This yeah. would be the number of people who I have in circles or who have me in circles that also have more than 32 people following them. Is it that? Or I want that to make sure that. we that get is that absolutely right. That's spot on. Okay. So as you slide it, these are the people that have more than 32. Is, it, is, that, yeah. is that the way? Yeah. More than 32 connections from within that graph. That's right. It's great. So that's so that's why it's getting less and less because that, right. that's what I expect. If it's getting the other way, I would have been worried. That I didn't get it. But okay, we got that. Okay. All right. Yeah. Now, this is still. I mean, it's obviously a lot easier to read than that was. <laughs> yeah. <clears throat> However, so let's just move it up onto this one. We can see what's going on. Now, the the rest in this order knows by in the layout settings, we can really start to play about with it. So let's just say I want to see the names by the people rather than having to hover over everything. You've got a label threshold, which is the default set to 12. If I just move that to 2 and click Apply, I then get people's names. Okay. Now, because it's so close, closely for, uh, uh, positioned, what I can then do is just change the label size, say, to about 6, and just makes it a little bit easier to read. All right? yeah. Now I can just zoom in and zoom around. And we can now see here, you know, um, <coughs> who these people are. Yeah. So, as an example, let me just move this one up. We've got uh, Rhinus Baker or Baker. Um, who else have we got in here? Who's that? That's Dee Dee King. Uh, uh, and what about the different size of these dots? Okay, so the different size of the notes, and this is just within the graph, okay? Yep. Not everybody that's following you. All right. It's just okay. the people that are within the graph and who they are also following. If you notice all the lines coming from each of the nodes to one another, these are all reciprocated follows or reciprocated circles. Yeah, which is important. Right. Now, the larger the node, the more people within this graph, people or pages within this graph, are following you. All right. So over here we've got. Trevor McGee, you know, it's a, it's a larger no than, than most, okay? We can because he's got more followers. More followers within this graph, more, more followers of other people that are following people within this network graph. It's quite, okay, let's just say, I know, all right, so let me try and put this down a different way. Okay. Here we have 4,353 people within this graph. Yeah, only within this graph, all right? <clears throat> and I've reduced the noise, if you like, to show only with using the filter to only show those profiles or pages that have more than 32 reciprocated follows or uh, circle ads from people within these 4,353 notes, not in the global sphere of things. And remember, this is just a snapshot. And that, so this is the reciprocation. So these people are connected, and those people have connected back to them. Correct. Right. OK. Now, now what's important here is that the orange nodes in here yeah, are ones which I am indirectly connected to, 
All right, so go back to that, that again. Let's say you wanted to, you're connected to me, but you're not connected to my dad directly. You are indirectly connected to him. You're extended circles. Yes. Now, from here then, um, with Trevor, I can see that there are so many people that are connected to him, just from the people that I'm following, the green nodes, yeah, that it's probably worthwhile, because I know the people, and I, so, I carefully select the people that I follow, that just based on this, it's probably worth me uh, adding him to my circles. Okay. Just because there's so many of the green nodes, the people yeah. I'm directly connected to, and the, the type of information and posts I like to read more than anything. Okay, so perfect. Just pause there for a second. So let's now say your profile or a page, so, so this is particularly relevant for companies, is that this gives you insight that you're not going to be able to get on Google Plus itself, Correct. basically. You can't, you can't tell this from ripples, as to other potential people that you should look at as connections. Now, I want to drill into an example. What would this mean for a page? Because I'm sure you thought all this through, Lee. What, what could that then do? If I start to follow and I start to build a relationship with that person, what's what, yeah? Well, from a page perspective, it could highlight potential managers for me. If we're posting along the same things, but I'm not necessarily I could be directly connected to them. They're engaging with my posts. They're writing good value. They're they're very well connected to the the networks themselves. So that's the bit. Can I just say, how do we know they're very well connected? That's the that's because this is taking it up a level from ripples. Because with ripples, it's about engagement, and we can see we can see spread of the content uh, through the network, but yeah. we can't extrapolate the meaning of who those people are connected with beyond that single event. And, and even then, we can't dig into into this. You, you know, it's just not there at the minute. So no. what 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 does the, I always want to kick in? I. I when I did all organizational psychology, it would always used to be data, information, meaning. That's yeah. the thing. And at the moment, we're looking at the information bit. And I'm pulling out now, trying to go, OK, well, what does this mean for me as an individual if I find out that one of these people has a large, well, a, a large node, actually? Yeah. What? And that's, yeah. that's the point. I mean, basically, from here, all right, I can see, without even just highlighting over any name, the larger the node, the more connected they are. Within this particular graph, and this Within is the bit. Particular graph. Yeah. However, you've also got to remember that, from an information sharing perspective, <clears throat> if we want information to spread or a post that we've written to spread, we need to have people that are well connected. All right. When someone, if someone's sharing a post within our network, and um, someone else shares that post from within our network. And it, it reaches people within our extended circles. The chance is that they're going to read it more if if they see it coming or being reshared from two people that they follow, but don't necessarily follow us, right? So you get these overlapping um, lines of, and the ripple effects coming through. It's like I share it once, you share it again. You know, maybe John Smith shares it and. All of a sudden, we've just reached Debbie McGee, and Debbie McGee doesn't follow me, but I posted it originally. But she's seen that you've shared it, Ronnie shared it, and all of a sudden, it's like, wow, okay, something, something's happening here. All right, I need to, I must need to read this. If two, I've got to say, and it's magic. Do you get that reference? Yeah. Do you, oh, you get that? Reference? Oh god. You like that? Yeah. yeah. Those United States. That, that, <laughs> well, anybody who's outside the UK will not get that. Yeah, Debbie McGee's reference at all. Anyway. Well, they, they, they won't get it, not a lot, anyway. <laughs> oh, very nice. Very oh. nice. Okay, so, right, now, let's now flip this into another realm. Okay, so because we wanted to start with the basics of just trying to understand the mapping. And the extended yeah. circle thing is something which, you know, we've all got to get our heads past because it's how the network flows beyond just those that we're close to. It's, it, it, that really is the next step out of that network. Correct. So the question is hashtags, because I know that a lot of people, it, it's like, okay, this is interesting. I can get some insight. But what about using this in relation to hashtags? Okay. So now we come out of this graph. Yep. Then, and I need to take you to a dashboard. Okay. So 
up here, once you've got a saved project running, um, and I think we'll probably need to do that um, as a separate thing, Martin, if that's okay. Yeah. I've got one here running on the hashtag NS. Okay, so this so this hashtag NS, did you say, this is when people use this hashtag as no share. Is that the way we're going to go? Correct. Okay. All right. So, yeah, this came from uh, friends plus me. It's the default on the friends plus me, which is friends plus dot me. Um, and you can change it, everybody. I discovered that. That's, that's one of the things. But uh, have a look. <laughs> okay. Yeah. So I've been tracking this for a while since you can see here on the dashboard, NS started on October the 4th, 2013. Yeah. Okay. Yeah. Now... That, it's the only thing I'm tracking with this is just that hashtag on Google Plus. Right. And we can see that Nodex is indexed just recently 386 posts uh, of people from people using the uh, NS hashtag. Okay. Right. And, and what time scale are we on from this? Is this well, up here the default is seven days. Okay. Okay. Yeah. Um, I mean, we could go all the way back. All right, let's go. Let's go back to <coughs> New Year. All yep. right, so we go back from there. What it's now doing? It's now refreshing all of the data. Okay. So just to, for those watching, in the upper right, you can. It's, it's similar to the AdWords dashboard in that way. So yeah. the time and, 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 and analytics. So you've got that in the upper right, and just click and change the, the, the time scales. Okay, it's cool. It's purposely done rather than trying to reinvent the wheel. Yeah, <laughs> yeah. So. That will just now start refreshing each of these nine modules, or each of the, the, the uh, different uh, graphs within. Yeah. The, okay. And once it's done that, basically, it, I, I see the dashboard here as a real-time infographic. Okay. Because <clears throat> the I'll, I'll start explaining each one as we um, we're waiting for it to refresh. Yeah. Okay. The statistics panel top left. Okay, shows how many posts it's indexed. <coughs> Do excuse me. How many of those posts um, contain links? What the average number of seconds um, between those posts are? So from a viral capacity. Yeah, yeah. You know, the shorter amount of time, obviously, uh, the faster it's picking up. Uh, how many uh, unique authors there are? Within those posts, okay. Yeah. Because if there was just three thousand posts and two unique authors, it doesn't really. It says the hashtag's not getting used a lot. Yeah. Okay. So here's the question: Have you, if you've done the, almost, and I, I use spreadsheets, but the idea of what if you take the top hundred hash, not top, not even top, you take fifty to hundred hashtags, and yeah. you you then look at the analysis of I don't know, over a period of a month. So you take Star Wars Tuesday, because of course, you know, and yeah. you take, plus your business, and you take all of these in. Have you got that so that people can see in an easy fashion? I mean, is that available within Nodex as well? Can you do cross comparison of hashtags and, and start to get an idea? Well, yes, you can. Let me just do okay. it here. So once you've actually, um, let me go to utilities and we'll do compare projects. So. Okay. <coughs> In here, once you've, let's say if hashtag is your thing and you want to, what I like to call it is look at or build hashtag communities, i.e. identifying people within uh, what they like to talk about or topics of conversation. Yeah. We'll just let that load up. Because um, this is still using, there we go, that's fine. This should now pop up. Just bear with me for a second. Okay. Being, living in the countryside with the weather that we've been having has played havoc with my broadband. So, um, anyway, well, I'll let that load up. Uh, well, let that load. Let's go back to the other modules and let's just zip through those other ones then, Lee. That's where okay. the, the best. Let's zip through the nine and then we'll, we'll, we'll come back to the project then. Okay. So, this statistics box, we yeah. can see, all right, that there's 3,186 posts been indexed. Yeah. And if we, go, if we go down four lines, we can see out of that 3,186, we've actually indexed 
1,645 unique people that have posted within those. So on average, they're posting two. <laughs> yeah? Yep. Okay? Yep. So it, it tells us a lot about a hashtag. Um, we, all can, we can also tell uh, that from the 3,186 posts, the penultimate line at the bottom, 819 were positive, yep. as in sentiment, and 236 were negative. The okay. balance... Now, I'm going to have to dive in. There's, there's two things we've got to do on this, Lee, just for, for people watching. The first thing is, if I want to do a hashtag search myself, sorry, not search, a hashtag analysis, how yeah. do I do it? We don't need to go through the whole process. If you just point people towards where they will do it within the Nodex platform. No problem. So, when you are... Uh, actually, Martin, can we? Yeah. Can you share your screen? Because I'll take you through it. Yeah. Let okay. Me, cool. You first screen. Yeah. Bear with me a second, and let's do that, and come back to here. Okay. You should now see my screen there as it's building up. Should we leave this running? Um. No, you can stop. Okay. That. Oh, it's yeah. stop that now. Okay. So, we're so what should I do? Basically, go yeah. click on the green mi uh, microscope. Magnifying glass. There we go. Okay. Okay. Yep. Okay. Now, for those people that haven't got a save project started yet, this is what they will see. So from here, you can see on the left-hand side, click here to add a new project. Okay. Done. Yep. Now, everything with the, an orange asterisk means you need to give it. Uh, you need to enter it. So. Okay. So if I go, let's just do this one because it's a bit of fun. The Star Wars Tuesday, and. Keywords, do I put it all together? Yes, as, as, a, as a hashtag, yes. So, and I, do I include the hashtag? And does it I matter would, if it's... I would yeah. include the hashtag. Right, so that's the key bit. So this is where we go. Okay, and then exclude. I'm not worried about the exclude. Um, so, oh, it says no suggestions found. Is that okay? That's fine, and I'll explain what that does yep. another time. Okay. Now, criteria, don't worry about it at the moment. Demographic, go to there. Okay. All right. Any country, any gender, starting from, let's go for uh, 2000, like, when did we start this? Ages ago. So it was actually, let's go for the, let's go from March. It's almost March. Last, no, February last year. Mm -hmm. okay. First of February last year. Um, end date. Now, great. Sentiment. Now, this is what I was coming around to. So language, fine. Sentiment. Leave it at the moment. Right. Do you just want to explain in one sentence what it is? Because we probably won't come on to that right now. Yeah. Sentiment is whether people are talking positively about a subject matter or not talking positively about a subject that's, matter. For now, that's all we need to know. Fantastic. Then okay. I click Run Demo Search for this one. Or? Run a Demo Search. Okay. So we click into that. Did I click it? Yeah, you have. And uh -huh. scroll up. Scroll up. Let's scroll down. Scroll up. Scroll down, sorry. Scroll Let's down. Let's just picking anything up. Is it? Okay, so there's nothing there at this moment in time because we're coming in, we're Monday, and it's going to start picking stuff up. Now, what you now need to do is click Save Project. Okay. All right. Yep. Yep. Do we want to run another one just to show? I would do. Yeah. 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 Let's have a look at what's what's being talked about at the moment. Okay. So this. Okay, that's fine. Let's let's go for that. So project now, name. Yep. No, so you, you're already in here. So what you now need to do is go back to, and I've just seen I need to do an update. Do, do, if I do a search again, add yeah. new project. Do an add new project again. Okay. Project name, just um, oh. what we're we going to call this one. Well, let's have a look for a hashtag that's currently being run, shall we? Okay. Out on Plus. So let's explore in here. And just for everyone to know, this isn't just, as you can probably see from the screen, it's not just Google+, Plus. this is Twitter, this is LinkedIn, this is Facebook as well, is that right, Lee? You've got access to the API on that? Yeah. yeah. So, and big, big businesses are using this as a way of understanding what is going on. Because so often we're in the activity, we don't see where the activity is leading, how the influencers are affecting, for instance, the hashtag spreading. Because this is where we start to tie up, I guess, Lee, uh, what we've been discussing back to our own profiles, our own pages, and other people's profiles and pages, as who are the people that are influencing these things? And are we able to build relationships, in part, with some of those people if they have an interest in a specific thing? So we can find influencers beyond looking at ripples. Correct. Okay. Absolutely. So, 
What have we got? Right, well, I've just got put in, if you, some people may or may not know how to find a hashtag, um, but if you go into Google Plus and in the search bar, just put the hashtag symbol in there, then you'll find um, it will just list all the trending ones currently. Sure. So I can see here, uh, President's Day, Macro Monday, uh, Monday Motivation, and Motivation Monday, Star Wars Rebels is also trending. Awesome. Okay, let's go for, um, mo uh, let's go for, well, President's Day. I'm in America, why not? Go for it. All right. Number one. So, President's Day, I'm going to call it yeah. that, then, yeah. and it's, and, just add the and then that, and then just come back into there. Okay, let me go next. Yeah, and next again. And uh, next again. Or oh, the down demographic, oh. was it? Or oh, just next? Yeah, you can click that on just, that. That just moves us along. Okay, fine. Yeah. And uh, let's click, click on run demo search. Leave everything else as yep. it is. That's Once fine. Click on run demo search. Okay. okay, and that then is going to start pulling in. Correct. Who is talking about this live? Yeah, and then so, click on save project for me. Okay. So that they're saved. Okay, so this is the thing for people to, to understand is this gives you insight, not just to the stream. So, for instance, I'm going to, you can see me flip screens. If I click on the, the hashtag, that will show me what is in the stream for that particular content. Yeah. So this is the stuff that, that currently is flowing. It's, yes. It's a, a, what we call a public holiday in the States today. So what we've got then with this, as it feeds through, will it take a few moments, Lee? Yeah, I mean, basically, now what you can then do is yeah. go back to your um, the green magnifying glass for me. Yeah. And you'll see your message in here now. When you click on it, you'll see that you've got two saved projects. Yeah. Uh, and you can see at the moment the status is waiting. Okay. And what's happening now is it's it's pinging the Google Plus API okay. to get data out of it. Great. Right. Okay. Well, in which case, let's leave this running, and because we're going to pick up on the what was good, so we keep this running and we will return. If we flip back to your screen, sorry for yeah. the. Oh, so if, if we flip back to your screen, let's run through the other modules as we wait for that to come back up. So the other modules in the dashboard. Mm -hmm. So I'm just going to go. Works. That would yeah. be cool. Right. Okay. <coughs> Excuse me. So. Basically, what we'll see is within those hashtag searches that you've just started, Martin. Yeah. When you uh, the, the status changes from waiting to running, when you click through to it, this is what you will see. Okay. okay. So we've got the statistics and we've covered that. The share of data shows um, how much or how many posts in, in, in total across Google Plus, Twitter. Yep. YouTube and uh, news sites. Now, just to let you all know, it's the Google Plus is free for um, for the Google Plus community. Everything else isn't, but that's why we're just staying on Google Plus. The influencers are those people that are gaining or uh, getting the most engagement on their posts relating to the topic. In this particular instance, it's the hashtag NS. All right. And what we can so see this, this is this is really interesting. So this uh, you've got to think what this actually means. We can't get this information from using the tools on Google itself at the moment. So so this is now this is it's straight away you've done the analysis. So instead of going yeah. around the post and going, oh wow, you've had a hundred shares from that content, this person's had twenty shares and so on, it just pulls it into the dashboard and we're able to see for any particular topic, for instance a hashtag. Because you don't yes. even need to—you don't even need to use a hashtag, do you? you no, can no, the you can get your keywords right. Yeah. So, it, but for the hashtag, we can then find out. For instance, social media. Think social media. Who are the people that are gaining the traction on that particular hashtag within a particular date range? Yep. Correct. Okay, Absolutely. Great. All right. Let's, let's keep zipping through these ones uh, <clears throat> now. Just to let you know, you can click on all of this. Yeah. Right. So, for example, I wanted to click on Yana. Yeah. Yeah. It will bring up her profile and also um, the post relating to the keyword or in a specific instance the hashtag. Okay. Um, also, we're pulling in information from Clout, Peer Index, and Cred um, in terms of the, if people like those metrics. Um, but obviously, Peer Index and Cred don't um, uh, aren't applicable to Google Plus. 
Yeah. Then we have a series of tabs here, which just shows you know what she's posting about, her online presence. You saw the network graph that's there. Um, we can make notes on her on her profile as well. We can also get input from Cloud on what she, Cloud feels she's influential about and within the Cloud community, etc. Yeah. All right. And in here, we can also tell Nodex that actually, let's set her as an influencer in this subject matter. Does that make sense? Yeah. All right. So I've now set her as an influencer. <coughs> and I can do that for all of these people here. The relationship graph I'll show you in a second. We can also then go on to, say, the gender analysis and see, you know, who are the people that are predominantly talking about the subject, you know, is it more male than female? The unknowns are obviously the people which prefer not to identify their gender for whatever reason, that's absolutely fine. We can also see within the word cloud to the right of that, the key phrases that are being mentioned within the recent posts, okay? And again, all of these are clickable. If I want to see, you know, what's one, um, so I can click on the, let the word one and it will bring up all of those posts relating to that word, yeah, and people can do this. We can then switch to the map down here, and we can see where around the world, you know, people are posting from, yeah. it's just refreshed, which is why it's, it's going from there, um, and I'll just refresh that one. We can then also see the period of days where, which, which days had the most posts relating to that keyword or phrase. Right, so um, that's, so... Again, this is not available from what we're using, what, what we're doing on Google Plus. We can't, without counting them up, and even then, I don't think we can pretty get them all. No. So this this gives you, and, and it's across different networks, isn't it? So the, the different colors no. are different networks, yeah? No. No. What, what are the it, different colors? Yeah. So the different colors are, the, the blue node is the total amount of posts. Okay. The green node is the total number of positive posts. Okay, so sentiment again, sir. Correct. All right. Okay, right. So, and that's across all of the networks. Correct. It will be so, yes. If, if I selected from the drop-down menu here and said all sources, yeah, then the graph would change, and it would basically be for all across social ah, media. Ah, right. Okay, so that's the that's where you filter to uh, Twitter or what have you, or you can have it as a, as a whole. But you've just chosen Google Plus. Correct. Yeah. Okay, so one key application for those of you who are watching this is if you're running a hashtag campaign and you've created a hashtag, for instance, and you want to know what the sentiment is, and we've just touched on sentiment, positive or, or negative, this can yeah. give you an indication, and you're not going to be able to get that indication elsewhere. Let's see. But also on, on that, from a comparison perspective, yeah, you can compare to, say, is Star Wars Tuesday used more on Twitter than on Google+. Plus? Yes, you know. so you, you, and you just flip through between right. the two different graphs, and, and you'll find Star Wars user probably is not used at all on Twitter and is used on Google+. Plus. So you then look at, have you got a potential marketing campaign to be done on Twitter in relation to in, in finding the influencers, engaging Correct. with the influencers, and then in turn, it, it, you know, it, that then propagating the message for that particular hashtag. Absolutely. Okay. <coughs> now, <clears throat> what we've also done on the, the map area is we can zoom in and out, but we can also then um, click on the, uh, the location points and find out who's put the post out and what have they said. Okay. Okay. So it just brings up these little things, so we can start to get an idea. You know, my perfect recipe for the recipe for the perfect Google Plus post, um, and just from a comparison, let's just quickly just go to the, say someone in the states and click on them, and it's against the Beatles that are trending on that. This is full. All right. So that enables us just to get that little bit more information. Now, there's one module in here I've left out, which is the relationship graph. And this dashboard, as you're seeing, is the summary. It's the, the real-time uh, infographic. But up at the top here, we've got a relations link. And if I click on that. So where are you clicking? Sorry, I can't see. OK, I can see it. Yep. So you're at the, the top, at the top middle. Yep, yep. Yeah. And what, what we're seeing here is just a section, cross section of uh, posts that have been put on to Google Plus. Okay. But as they stand, it doesn't really tell us a lot. And one of the things we found was that 
we needed a way to go back and update all of the posts to see how much engagement they've got, which is why now we've added this update engagements at the bottom on the right hand side. Can you see that? Uh, so look, yeah. Okay. And what I'm now going to do is say, okay, well, how many nodes do I want to have in the graph, first of all? At the moment, if I just type on all of these, we can see in the graph statistics I've got 390, all right, uh, selected from within the last seven days. Yeah. Okay. Now, what <coughs> oh, dear, excuse me, sorry. What I'm now going to do is say, okay, I want to update those. So I've just clicked the update button. Yeah, and I'm now it, what Nodex is now doing. It's now going to each of those posts and finding out how many reshares, how many comments, how many plus ones each of those have received. Okay, and it starts instantly. Now, the key thing is here. Once it's finished fetching all of the engagements, it will the system will email you to your to your Google Plus email address and tell you the engagements have now been updated. However, we can do a quick shortcut and just click on the refresh button and it will then display um, all the um, engagements which it's currently fetched. Nice, but where's the refresh button? On the just screen? on the browser. The browser just, refresh. Just, okay, so that's all you need to do. Okay. okay. So you can see immediately, just in a few seconds, less than, what, 20 seconds? It's already collected in. The, so it's gone from being all blues to, you see, we can see predominantly um, orange, which is plus ones. There's a few greens, which are reshares. And if you're not sure what each of these are, we can go to the um, uh, graph statistics, and it will tell you in the legend here what each one of these are. All right. And we can see, we knew instantly that there were going to be more um, orange nodes and anything else. We can just tell at this moment in time. Yeah. Now, this is fine, um, but let's get some action points from it. We can see that there's some people in here which are getting greater resonance on their posts, right? Yeah. So let's just change the graph type again, yeah, to in degree, and we can see that some blue nodes have gotten bigger in size. Yeah which tells us instantly that they're getting the most engagement. And again, here comes that filter bar, and from here we can see exactly which posts. Now I've stripped them out, and I can now just highlight over them. I get the profile summary of the person that posted the uh, thing on, on Google+. And what I can now do is click the node, and I can see the exact post as well, all right, that attracted uh, all of that interest. And now, I can en you can engage on that post as well, can't you? Absolutely. I can click on the comment, I can engage with it, I can plus one it, and I can even follow her and add it to my circles, etc. You know, it, it's just Google Plus embedded posts, and it was one yeah. of the key we look for. Now, that's fine. We can start to see under this topic, oh, look, <laughs> there's somebody that we all know, there's Mark Trapphagen. Um, we can see what he's sharing, and this is related to Cadbury, and he's, the type of engagements he's been receiving. Um, who's this here? This is Susan Palmer. What's she been sharing? And we can start to build a picture of the type of posts that are related in this specific instance um, to this hashtag that are getting the most engagements. So yeah. logic would then say, if I look at these and analyze these posts and say, well, if I did a post myself like this, are my posts over a period of time, likely also to attract similar engagement. Chances are yes, but obviously there's a series of steps to get into that. You know, um, Let's look at it from a different way. What we've seen here are the people that are getting um, the, uh, the most engagement, and again we can apply the label threshold to this um, to get their names. Okay. But what about those people that are engaging the most on other people's posts? Let's change the thing to out degree. Okay? So now we're on out degree. I'm just going to load that up again.
And just to say, we are we're still waiting on the president's um, day, so we'll probably leave that because I think Lee's pretty much covered it on this anyway, because um, it's going to be the same information. Just take me through to a dashboard where we can be doing what you just showed. Yeah, exactly. Yeah. Okay. So um, from here, then, what I want to do is just go out degree, and I'm going to just change this. I'm going to stop that, cut that back down. Now, here are the people who are engaging the most on other people's posts in okay. relation to that hashtag. Okay, and from my perspective, when I look at who's engaging the most on other people, if I want to find or follow people that are engaging on other people's posts the most, this is the way to do it. You know, I, I like to follow people that are engaging. You know, I won't necessarily follow people that don't engage with me. You know, um, because social media, as with everything, is about building relationships and getting to know people and all that kind of stuff. And if it's just one way all the time, um, you, you you know, you need to find people to bounce ideas off, whether you agree with those ideas or not. You know, it's it's all healthy conversation. So this is how I go about finding those people. So from here, I can see everyone who is engaging on all those other posts that were in that graph, and I say, okay, well, you know, which posts are they? Which which posts are they are they engaging on the most? And that helps me. Okay. Now, from a, a list perspective, what I can do is you can see we've got save graph here. Yeah. And in here we've got a CSV download. And you can download that whole file of everybody within the graph. Yeah. Okay, so one of the what can, how can we add on bulk? Can we add people on bulk, or if you know from one of these graphs to circles? Not at this time. Not at this time, but that's something maybe for the future. We're working on. Okay. We are working where you can basically try and highlight on the screen, take a cross section, um, highlight all of them, and say drop into a circle. That's what we're working on at the moment. Okay, great. So, right, we've. It's been 57 minutes. I think at this juncture, it's probably worth coming back in the room, Lee, because I, I, we'll, we'll end up having another session again. So what I wanted to do right. was give an overview yeah. of what this is about, because it's huge. Really. And yeah. one of the things that I think that people need is to be able to ask a question, yeah. as in, I would like to know, and then go from there. And that's something which... I mean, we've spoken about this before. I, I believe there's that there's a need for a training course Absolutely. for people to really understand. So how how is that coming along? That's coming on fine. We've had to we've been running through lots and lots of changes, um, trying to keep it and getting the feedback from the Google Plus community. It's one of the reasons why I keep it free for Google Plus because people keep feeding back to me all the time. Yeah, that's invaluable for me because Nodex as a tool is is fine, but if people don't get it, then um, you know, we're doing something wrong. So, you know, it started off as an idea, but then it's people want to know more and more information. So the training course is coming, and I need about another seven days on it, to be completely honest. And then I, I'll push it out there to some uh, beta testers just to check it. And if they're happy, then we'll, we'll roll it out through the Plushy Business community. All right. That's great. So, so everybody watching, then we will. If you want to run this yourself, then it's going to be you, you, there's a handhold. This is really to get you to understand that this is a big thing, and it changes how you look at Google Plus when you can start to do analysis. And I think the hashtag analysis, in particular, it, for for companies, is very very powerful because you, then you can find the people who are influencing the, the content spread in in, in very different ways. Now, what about for people who want they don't want to do the work. They simply want to get the information. I mean, do you run reports, Lee? Yes. And we've got a reporting module in there now. You know, So if people just want data, then that's fine. Contact me, and I'll set the, the things up, and I can get them emailed. <laughs> you know, the system can email the reports constantly. So that's not a problem at all. So the reporting module is something we've been working on for like the last eight weeks. And we're at a stage that we're happy with it now. So. And with, with that, there's, you've got actionable insights that you can use with that. So that's not a problem. Okay. So that covers that. Well, that was an hour. Uh, so myself and Lee wanted just to give you an idea of the scope of this. 
before really the opportunity of the, the training courses coming out and with Pleasure Business we're going to have more blog posts. There's a great um, social network analysis blog that Lee did and he's going to do some more blogs on plushybusiness.com as well. This is not what a lot of people see on Google Plus. This is this is what businesses are using because Lee you're working with some big clients around this aren't you? I do yeah and um, they're global brands and it, it's gone beyond I mean we monitor social media but we're not a social media monitoring tool we kind of take what people are talking about and find a, a, better ways to understand what people like to talk about and how they like to talk about it and then how that information shares across networks. Um, which <clears throat> when you're looking, let's say you're a business and you're looking for your key advocates, um, it can be very useful. You know, who are the people that share that information the most and the people within their networks, are the, is it resonating with them? Um, also, on the, on the flip side of that, you've got, obviously got the reputation management side of things. Who are the people that are unhappy with a service or offering, um, and are you able then to change it? You know? So, so this is, let's just dive in, in the last minute or two. This is very interesting. So let's say you're a big brand, well, any brand, and mm. you find on the sentiment analysis that, that there are the, the, on that graph that you see at the bottom that mm. people are not being positive about what's. They're sharing your content or using that hashtag, but they're not being positive about it. That'd be one way of saying it. What this means is you can find those people just because you'll be able to access from from that graph directly. You can access their posts. Yeah. 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 So this is actually, again the level of insight into meaning. This is about to me. This is all is about meaning. How do we take the the information and do something with it? So again, there's another application. Do you know what, Lee? I think what we will wrap up now. But what would be useful? is probably for us to build a list of all of the things that you can do, the, the benefits and this sort of thing, and make me work with it because I know lots of people would just go, wow, that's, a, that's the application, that now brings me in, that's what I want. Because yeah. learning the tool is great and for, yeah. you, you want to learn the tool, but actually what people want is the result. Tell me that thing. So yeah. if we can build that up and maybe, maybe you know, if you're watching this on YouTube in the future, then yeah. we'll put the link in underneath and we'll have it on the Plushy Business site. Perfect. And look at that. Brilliant. Well, thank you, Lee. No, well, thank you. Thank you so much for having me. I'm pleasure. No, business. great. Also, and, and thanks everyone for watching. And know that this is just the start. Because I think this is now, this is a level up on quite a lot of the things that we're doing with Pleasure Business. And hopefully, we'll be able to take it a lot deeper and make it even more useful for small brands and for big brands as well. On that note, I shall leave you. It's like I'm in the sauna in San Francisco. <laughs> um, <coughs> But uh, I shall see you all again. Take care, folks. Fantastic. Bye.